These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. What block would we say hydrogen is in? S. Yeah, so this is one S block. One is called the principal quantum number. That's the principal quantum number. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next quantum number is called L. And these are the possible L's. Mm -hmm. Now there's another name for these. What's another name for when L is zero? Another name for when L is zero is the S type orbital. And what's another name for when L is one? Yeah, and then this would be, and this would be, all right. So the, there's just two different ways to name the types of orbitals. Mm -hmm. You could say, we know these are different types of orbitals because they have different shapes, right? We know that S orbitals are spherical, and we know that P orbitals are figure eights, and we were just seeing a lot of problems where we saw that D orbitals have four lobes, except for the one that has two lobes in the donut. Yeah. Uh, and then the F orbitals are even more complicated. I don't think we need to get into that. But different types of orbitals have different shapes. Well, you could just, so it's the same thing to say that you have an S orbital or to say that it's L is zero. Those are just two different names for the same type of thing. Um, I have a question um, about those dots, like after three, what does that mean? Well, that means that theoretically you could go on to four and five and but, six and seven. But theoretically, this goes on forever. And at this point, you would call this G, H, I, J. But those rarely come up in practical situations. So we only drew the first four. Okay, we just focus on four. You focus on the first four. Those are the ones that will come up in your course. Um, and we focus on the first four letters. If you had to, you would now start using alphabetical order. G, H, I, J, I believe. But those are unlikely to come up. Okay. Now, um, which block is this? S. 2s. 2s. Right? And how about this? Uh, 2p. So one thing that's interesting here um, is notice there is no 1p block. Mm -hmm. Because helium and uh, hydrogen are kind of the same. They, they have similar electron configurations. That's right. There's no p block. The general rule is that the l's go from 0 to n minus 1. For example, um, if n is 3, what are the possible values for L? Mm. Zero. One. Two. Could it be 3? No, because the rule we just learned is that L can't be bigger than n minus 1. Well, n minus 1 here would be 2. So the biggest that L could be here was 2. Oh, okay. That's just the rule. When n is 3, L could be 0, 1, or 2. So how about when n is 2, what could L be? Only 0 or 1. And when L is 1, zero. it just goes from 0 to 0. It's kind of a weird series. Let's actually fill in more of these blocks here. Um, so what block is this? It's 3s. Uh, yes. And how about this? 3p. Good. And here we have? 4s, 3d, 4p. I can't remember what this block is. F. What would be its principal quantum number? Um, 8. Oh, no, it's um, 5. 4. Four. Notice that the first S block is one. The first P block is two. The first D block is three. And the first F block is four. 
So you can use the order here to remember when it first comes up. S is the first type, so it comes in with a principal quantum number of one. P is the second type, so it comes in with a principal quantum number of two. P is the third type, so it first appears in the third principal quantum number. And F is the fourth type, that's just a memory age. Remember, it first appears in the fourth number. And what number would this be? Five F. When n is 4, what could l be? Um, 0, 1, 2, 3. Good. Now, by the way, what's another name for when l is 0? Um, it's angular. Is that angular? Right, although what I was going for is this is called the s orbital. Yeah, it's s orbital. What's another name for when um, l is 0? What's another yes. name for when l is 1? P, P. So notice that this tells us that the second shell has S and P blocks, but no D block. Okay, so which we already knew from the periodic table. So what we're seeing here is that our mathematical rule, our mathematical N minus one rule, is the same information as we can get from the periodic table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can figure that out either way. If you follow the N minus one rule for the possible L's, you can uh, get the same information that we just got from our periodic table, which is that the first principal quantum number has only an S shell, and the second principal quantum number has S and P shells. So what does the third principal quantum number have? S, P, and D. Which is consistent with what we had in our periodic table. This is where we first had 3D, but is there any 3F? No. There's no 3F. We knew that from the periodic table, and that's also consistent with our numbers here. There is no number 3 here. Okay. And how about the fourth principal quantum number? What subshells does it have? Oh, it's uh, S, P, D, F which we already had said this was where the F block first comes in. So these are two ways to see which subset shells you have, either using this rule or just using what we know about the periodic table. So this confirms again that the S block first appears in N equals 1, the second type of subshell first appears when N equals 2, the third type of orbital first appears when N equals 3, and the fourth type of orbital first appears when N equals 4. And if you know when this number, what this number is, you can figure out the number underneath it, which is relatively simple. Okay. All right, so that's our relationship between N and L. ML just like, goes just from negative L to zero positive. to positive L. Yeah. Okay. And these are just different orbitals. Mm -hmm. So for example, when L is three, when L is 3, what could ML be? Negative 3. Or? Negative 2. Or negative 1, one. or 0, one. or 1, two. or 2, or 3. Mm -hmm. When L is 3, ML is in this series. How about when L is 2? Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. Oh, OK. Now that's all you do. How about when L is 1? And how about when L is zero? zero. It can only be zero. So okay. this is a degenerate case where it goes from negative zero to positive zero, which is yeah. just zero. Now, what these are are the different orbitals. Yeah. So according to this, how many orbitals are there um, when uh, in the F block? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven orbitals. Okay. Does that match what the periodic table tells us? Yeah. If there's seven orbitals, how many electrons can we fit? And there are 14 columns in this yeah. f-block, if you oh, check the periodic table. Okay. So once again, the information you get from the mathematical rules must match the information that's given in the periodic table. Now, the, I don't actually use these mathematical rules when I'm solving problems. I just use the periodic table. But for a beginner, it's good to be able to do it both ways. So we can see, so what this is telling us is that the f-block has room for seven orbitals, mm -hmm. which means 14, 14 electrons. electrons. And now, how many orbitals are there then in the d-block? D block, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and it means that 10 electrons. Which, which matches what the periodic table would have told us anyway, because there's 10 columns. How many orbitals are there in the P block? Uh, three, six. Which uh, was six, and there's six columns here. And how many orbitals in the S block? One, one. Just the one orbital, with ML two, equal to zero, which is room for two electrons. Well, that's all there is room for in the S block, just the two electrons. Okay, okay. and finally, um, we know that each of the electrons 
Um, they can't have all four numbers the same. So how, what's the difference between two electrons in the same orbital? They have different spins, either positive one half or negative one half. So I could have one orbital, one electron here with an ML of negative three and a spin of negative one half. And then there could be another one in the negative three orbital with a spin of positive one half. And then there could be an electron in the negative two orbital with a spin of negative one half and then one with a spin of positive one half. Okay. So one thing I did when it, this was a really uh, whirlwind tour through the quantum numbers. It, it's hard to really understand these without doing some problems. But I wanted to point out that the mathematical rules correspond to the information in the periodic table. And you can usually answer quantum number problems either using the periodic table or using the mathematical rules. It's really good to try to get into the habit of doing it both ways for a beginner so that you can see that the two types of information uh, match up.